Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode, and if, I just get a background here, all this debris back here may make it look like I am in somewhere new, somewhere I've never been before, but that would be false. It is, what you're seeing here is the remnant of what was a parking lot, um, but we had a flood here back back in uh, February and it's totally washed this part of the parking lot out so it's pretty bad and so but in today's episode I wanted to uh, just talk to you about how to use uh, some glide baits I know spring musky fishing is upon us down here in the south I wanted to show you that uh, how to do that how to get about that I've been trying to get out and go fishing some tried to go yesterday but it was too windy but um, I didn't get to film any it was ridiculous uh, how much the wind was blowing but um, so today I just thought we would just show you um, some tactics that I use I know I've made a video earlier about what baits I'd use and this is something I had done on the channel a long time ago musky fishing basics well this is just uh, a continuation of that i know it's been some time since i had uh, done that have been a part of that and um, so i'm going to continue that uh, go ahead and like and subscribe for more how-to stuff here on the channel and let's get into today's video after looking it over there's a whole lot of boat traffic uh, coming in off that lake, and I didn't want to be in the way. I didn't want to be the guy. Oh, he's making a YouTube video uh, right here where I need to be. But it's fine. I'm going to hopefully try to get this filmed. I know there's a lot of traffic going on, so just bear with the noise. Uh, but anyways, I wanted to talk to you about gliders. Uh, that's probably my number one go-to bait here in the spring. Uh, and there's all kinds of different gliders, jerk baits. Those are things I'm going to try to break down. Uh, at least the glider part of that in this episode may make a part two for like jerk baits. Uh, but it's the same kind of concept. And when you think about glide baits, you think of, well, but maybe. <clears throat> um, may not know what that is uh, but uh, this is probably my number one favorite glide bait just because of how easy it, it is to use now, this is a drifter hellhound or hell puppy and this is probably one of the easiest gliding baits there is on the market by our bar none and um, I love them because they're easy to use and I've caught a ton of fish on them so uh really really great bait to use especially this time of year especially also if you're getting into uh gliders is, is your first time using them uh i can there's been several people that have wanted to get to know how to use them and this is what i hand them they're easy to use and one of the things that i really like about them is they've got every one of them have this white um, locator i guess is what you could call them and you can watch your bait work side to side so and it's really simple and, and so let's let's get to casting all right so before we get to casting uh what you'll want to grab is uh especially now in the musky world they've got uh, what they call a glide bait jerk bait rod typically it's shorter uh, they make them down to six nine or at least they did i used to have one that was six foot nine inches uh and a heavy action Heavy action, extra heavy action, or whatever. Uh, one of those two uh, will get you going in the right direction. They got them now up to like eight and a half foot. So just whatever your preference, if you like a longer rod, uh, I'd use that. Just whatever you're comfortable, comfortable with, whatever is your preference. It's really simple. 
really simple, especially with these. All you're gonna do is cast it out. And the difference between a glide bait and a jerk bait, a glide bait and a pull bait, whatever you wanna call them, is on a glide bait, you're gonna tap the rod tip. I'll tap the rod tip. And it's gonna do, it's gonna work for you. When I was first getting into fishing these, and especially after working these because they honestly work so well, um, I was worried about it not having a perfect action and I can tell you that that has nothing to do with it. Um, so you're just gonna bump it with your rod tip. Some guys I know will take their reel, kind of like so. And just watch it work and I think speed has uh, very little to do with it I know some guys that like to go pretty slow with theirs and sing uh, like lullabies and stuff like slow paced lullabies with it uh, but I've had all of my success with a fairly fast retrieve So when I say fast, like say I'm tossing it out there. And I would say too that you may want a faster retrieve reel. It'll help you keep the slack up, especially if you are thinking uh, if you're gonna use, use a reel to do it. But it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, the glide doesn't have to be perfect. It's honestly whatever you get used to. Um, these, uh, they've got a few different sizes and styles of these. So this is the Hell Puppy. And uh, I think it tends to ride a little higher in the water. Let me get a... Get a hell, hell hound out and show you, show you the difference. So, <clears throat> just for size comparison, hell hound, hell puppy. And then they also make a, a soft tail version of this. I don't have one, but um, there's really not much difference. This has got a lot slower glide. I'm not sure if you can tell. Tell in the water, but it's a lot more lazy, a lot slower. And you kind of got to have bigger pops with it. You're still not pulling it. You're just popping the rod tip. And then it's going to... Sometimes it'll go kind of at a slant. Sometimes it'll go side to side. <clears throat> but you can still work these just as fast. You know how I was saying. Um, if you can work it kind of fast. So that's the that's the hell puppy. So as I was saying, you got the hellhounds. I think they usually run about 20, 25 bucks, depending on where you get them at. Uh, they're probably on the cheaper side of, of the gliders. And then you get into um, like the Chaos Tackle Shuns and uh, Kodiak Nabins, all that's owned by Chaos. But um, they're on a little more of expensive side, about double the price. Uh, but you're going to get probably a little better paint jobs with them. A little different action too. So let's uh, take a look at those uh, and tell me what you think down in the comments below. And which one's your favorite and which one you're going to hope to be throwing uh, when the water is open. So I started out with the smallest with the Hell Puppy. I'll start out with the smallest on the 
This is the Shum Shum side. This is the mini tap dancer Rick. Uh, just came out with these two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. And I would say these are more for a intermediate learner on these they do take a little bit more finesse uh, to do them and uh, they're, they're i wouldn't say they're hard to work but they you definitely got to know what you're doing or and if you don't you can get really discouraged really fast but these have got more of a belly roll so these don't really have the erratic action like the like the hellhounds do, they're more side to side, belly roll, belly flash, those sorts of things. And I think he named them appropriately because you can definitely overpower them and they'll do all kinds of crazy stuff. Which again, like I don't think it hurts, but it's whatever you like. And that, that brings me to a good point I need to get to just a little bit later. But yeah, the small taps, especially on these, the smaller the jerkbait is, the smaller the taps need to be because I think you can't overpower them. I mean, I... So pretty much the same stuff. And this is more of like a shad, shad um, shaped body style. These tend to ride a little higher in the water too. <clears throat> it could be where they would. Um, here's a fun little tip too. So when I bought this one, it wouldn't glide very well. And so he has these tails glued onto uh, just a small piece of metal wire. Uh, you can bend that and you can twist the tail. Uh, and sometimes, believe it or not, the tail, the rubber in the tail can be too stiff and uh, you may just need to change tails. So that's what I ended up having to do with this one is change the tails and that works, works fine. But I used to get so aggravated that it, this wouldn't run because I loved it so much. Uh, yeah, soft taps. That's going to it's gonna rock and roll for you. We'll go into uh, the quickie. This is the, as you can tell, it's a little different shaped. Great, great pattern, by the way. A um, little different shape. It's going to give you a little bit different action. This one is going to run just a hair. Uh, a hair lower in the water. Yeah. But again, you're just tapping it. And it's gonna work for you. It's great. Any of these baits are great in the springtime. They're gonna get you bit. But that's the quickie. And he makes like four different sizes in this. He's got like a Mac Daddy one. Moby, I think is what they call it. Call it is the Moby size for Moby Dick. And this is the Kodiak round nose. Now this is for you power fishermen that want to be want to be finesse fishermen and use glide baits. This is for you because you can you can get on this thing. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to dart, dive. It's a great... I mean, if, you, if you can't finesse it, like this is the one for you because it'll rock and roll. And if you notice the, the shape, they make other ones of these too. The Phantom. I caught fish on Phantom too. I think they're all good. I think it's more of the action of the bait. I mean, if you can look at the rod tip on this one, you can tell that I'm being a little more aggressive with it. And when 
I get back to the house, I'll show you what kind of leader I use with this, but uh, that'll about wrap it up for the glide baits.